friends in this video we are detailed study about the textile mills so let's begin so friends in this video we are detailed study what are the different types of drives that will be required for the textile mill before we going to start that particular page first of all we can understand what are the different types of processes that will be carried out in the textile industry so friends as shown in that particular figure different type of process that will be using for the textile industry so the first type of process will be called it as the spinning process so in that particular spinning process we are just uh, spins the different types of the cotton material and uh, from which we can give output from the spinning processes to the weaving process so in that particular weaving process friends as we seen that we are just weaving the different type of the material that will be getting from the spinning processes so after that we are getting the different types of the finished product so this is the process which should be call it as a finishing process so in that particular finishing process we are using the different types of processes processes we can uh, detailly discuss so the basic processes that will be carried out in the finishing process that will be called it as dyeing and uh, printing of your material and after that particular process of the finishing of your material the product will be going to the garments manufacturing department so in that particular garments manufacturing department according to our requirement we can manufacture a different types of the textile by products such the textile by products will be the different types of clothes different types of the material that will be required for the different type of the packaging of the material so this is the last process by which we can get the output product of your textile industry so friends let's we can understand in detail what are the different processes in the textile industry so friends as we seen that the first process in the textile industry will be called it as the ginning process so what do you mean by the ginning process so the ginning process is very very simple by which we can uh, separate the cotton seed from the cotton because as we getting the basic raw material from the textile industry it is a different types of the cotton that will be getting from the farmer and uh, that the cotton will be basically growing for in the farm so we have to separate that the cotton seed from that particular cotton uh, so this is the first process which should be called it as a spinning process then the second process will be called it as a spinning process so what do you mean by the spinning process so the, in that particular spinning process just we are uh, spinning that particular cotton material and by which we can get the one of the different types of layers of that particular cotton so after that the while we are getting the different types of layers from that particular cotton we are doing the next process which will be called it as weaving so in that particular weaving process we are just uh, giving the different types of the cotton materials and by which we can weave according to our requirement and this weaving will be done by the blooms so that the blooms will be using a different types of bloom motors so this is the process of the weaving so it will be very very important process by which we can get the different types of layers of that particular cotton okay then the last uh, process by which we can get the finished product of your system so this process will be called it as finishing process so in that particular finishing process we are uh, using the different types of uh, processes okay so let on we can uh, detail what do you mean by the finishing what are the different types of process that we are including in that particular finishing process so friends in that particular presentation we are detailedly study about what do you mean by ginning what do you mean by spinning what do you mean by weaving what do you mean by finishing so what are the requirements in that particular ginning process spinning process weaving process and finishing process which types of motors are required for these processes and after the selection of your motor which type of drives will be preferred for that particular processes so friends let's understand the detail process of uh, one by one so friends let's we can start the first process in the textile industry so this is a very very basic uh, process in the textile industry and this is the first step of the textile industry it will be called it as ginning so friends what do you mean by ginning ginning is a very very simple process by which we can uh, separate out the seed from the cotton so friends this is the machinery by which we can get the ginning process so as we seen that friends this is the machine in which we are basically inserting the raw material which should be collected from the farmers 
from a farm and uh, the raw material which would be contain the cotton along with uh, some of the part of the cotton seed so we have to separate out the, the cotton seed from that particular cotton because we have to do the different processes on that particular cotton thing so for the sake of that just we are inserting this raw material here so after this is the raw material which will be inserting here so this is the process by which we call it as the kinning process so by which we can separate out the different types of cotton seed and a different type of the cotton material so as we seen that here there the there is the different types of cotton material that will be getting from that particular device and the purely cotton which will be just filled out by this means of this mechanism so friends by this process of the ginning process just we are separating the different types of cotton seeds from that particular cotton and we are getting the only cotton that will be the raw material which will be required for your textile industry so this process will be called it as a ginning process so friends what is the requirement for that particular ginning process so friends the process will require basically standard starting torque and standard overload capacity because friends as we seen in that particular ginning process while we are starting of this machinery we will require some of the starting torque okay and this machinery will be driven by some of the types of the motors so which type of motors what is the requirement what is the later we can discuss okay so basically we are uh, requirement for that particular ginning process will be that so it will be require the starting torque starting overload capacity because we are just inserting the lot of raw material of the cotton along with the cotton seed in that particular so we have to require the starting overload capacity along with the constant speed because we want to not do the speed control in that particular process we will require a constant speed okay so for the sake of that we will uh, prefer one type of train which will be giving you obviously the starting torque will be larger it should have a starting overload capacity then it should have a constant speed operation so we are preferring such type of drive for that particular operation so that would be called it as a process of ginning now we can understand the second process of the textile industry so what do you mean by the second process so this is called it as spinning so first of all we can understand what do you mean by the spinning so friends as we seen that this is the one of the picture of the spinning processes that will be carried out in your industry so what do you mean by the spinning first of all we can understand so spinning is very very simple method by which we can basically twisting to produce the continuous yarn of a sufficient strength is called it as spinning process so friends what is the raw material which will be required for the spinning process so obviously the raw material which will be required for the spinning process is a cotton and from that particular cotton we want to twist so we want to just twisting that particular cotton material and from that we can get produce a continuous yarn so what do you mean by the yarn so it is a continuous layer of your cotton that is will be called it as yarn and uh, this yarn will be having a sufficient strength that will be called it as a spinning process so by which so in a simple method what do you mean by the spinning we call it as it is the process of the twisting and to produce a continuous yarn so this process will be called it as a spinning process and this will be very very important process in the textile industry so what is the requirement so as we seen that friends this is the cotton material by which we can get simple continuous yarn so friends as we seen that from that particular the cotton material we are getting the different types of the yarns so by which we can get different types of the yarn processes in that particular process so friends what is the requirement for that particular spinning process so for the sake of that particular spinning process we will require a moderate value of starting torque and high overload capacity so friends while we are understanding the ginning process and spinning process uh, some of the requirement remaining the same so obviously the operation of this process is again a constant speed hence no speed control is necessary but two speed motors are preferred why we are preferred this two speed motor because as we seen that while we are spinning in a textile industry we are getting the different types of cotton and from that particular cotton we want to twist that particular cotton and will get a very very strong yeah so that's why we will require a uh, two speed motors okay so friends after that we can understand what is the process which should be called it as weaving so by the process of the weaving we can just because this process will be done after the process of your spinning so what do you mean by the weaving 
So this weaving process will be done after the spinning process. So what do you mean by the spinning process? So in that particular spinning process, we are getting the yam. But before going to yam, actually, actually woven, it is to be made into a uniform layer. So friends, as we seen that in that particular spinning process, so in that particular spinning process, just uh, we are twisting that particular raw material from the cotton and from that we can get the yam. So yam, which should be gotten very strengthened of that particular textile material. But friends, what do you mean by the weaving? So weaving is a very, very simple process. So before the yam is actually woven, it is made to into a uniform layer because we want to form a different types of uniform layer. So the process is called it as weaving and this process of weaving will be done by the means of this loom. So what do you mean by the looms? So friends, uh, this is very, very important process that we are discussing in, in detail. So the weaving process is basically carried out after the spinning process. So sometime for the weaving of that particular uh, process, we will require the bloom or we call it as the bloom motor. So what we are carried out in that particular weaving process, we want to form a uniform layer. So the formation of this uniform layer, because we want to get, this is the yam, basic yam, and we have to uh, just getting, this is getting from the different types of the spinning processes and by which we have to perform a uniform layer of that particular yam. So for the sake of that, we were using the weaving process and by which we can get a product which is required for your textile industry. So what is the requirement to drive that particular weaving process? Because as we seen that in that particular weaving process, we are using the different types of drives. So for the sake of drives, what is the requirement? So for the weaving process, the first requirement is that, so it will require two to 2.3 times rated torque at the start. So again, for the weaving process, we will require, that is a starting torque should be larger or the moderate value. And the second requirement for the weaving process is that, so for the weaving process, we want to just uh, frequent start and frequent stop. So because as we seen in that particular weaving process, what is the process? So we have to form the different types of layer. So friends, as we seen that fine, we are getting the raw material. Some of the cotton material is be as it is. So for the sake of that, we have to just frequent start frequent start of that particular machine. So this will be the requirement for the weaving process. But friends, while we are doing the frequent starting and stopping, the operation is a first rate speed and no speed control is again required in that particular process. So the actually totally enclosed squirrel cage induction motors are preferred for this particular industry. So friends, as we seen that from the different types of processes like dimming, spinning and weaving, we will uh, require some of the requirement will be remaining the same. That is the motor that will be required for that particular process, which will be having a moderate starting torque. So Depending upon that, we have to get a constant speed operation. So there should be a no requirement of the speed control, but at that time, it should be well and safe operation of that particular drive. So friends, after that, uh, we can understand the next process uh, that will be very, very important process by which we can get a finished product so that the whole process will be called it as a finishing process of the textile industry. So friends, as we seen that, this is the basically the process by which we call it as a finishing process. So in that particular finishing process, the different compartments are there and by which we can get the different types of the processes which will be required for the finishing processes. And after that, the particular finishing process, a finished product of that particular textile industry, which will be available here. So we can see this will be the finished product of the textile industry. And these are the different processes that will be carried out uh, while uh, we are getting a finished product. So friends, the, there are the different processes. So the first process in that particular finishing process. So this process will be called it as the bleaching. A second process will be called it as dyeing. Then the third process will be called it as printing. Then the next process will be called it as a calendaring. Then the next process will be called it as a stamping. And the last process by which we can get the finished product from the textile industry, it is a packing. So friends, let's we can understand what do we mean by this different different processes okay because from these processes we are getting a different types of finished product from the textile industry itself okay so let's we can understand what do you mean by the bleaching so what do you mean by the bleaching so impurities like oil grease are removed and the 
a brick is made white during the bleaching. So as we seen that there are the different types of impurities. Such impurities will be called it as oil, grease, because as we seen that while we are doing the processes like uh, weaving and spinning, so it will be contain some of the impurities. So from the bleaching process, we are just uh, removing these all the impurities from that particular material, and uh, we are getting this material will be white in that particular process that will be called it as bleaching. So after that the bleaching process there should be a next process which will be called it as the dyeing. So what do we mean by the dyeing? So depending upon our requirement the process is done that is called it as dyeing because before process which will be dyeing the whole product of the textile industry which will be the white and depending upon requirement we can give a different colors to that particular system so that process will be called it as dyeing so in that particular dyeing process we are using the different types of dye of the color and depending upon our requirement we can give the different shade of color to that particular cloth so this the process will be called it as dyeing so after the process of the dyeing we are just discussing about the process which should be called it as printing so what do you mean by the printing process so in that particular printing process we have to print the different types of designs and patterns in the multicolor so friends according to our requirement we can give the printing so in that printing we can uh, choose the different types of patterns different types of designs of which are multicolor so this is the process which should be called it as printing so friends after the printing process then the next process of the finishing type which should be called it as uh, calendaring so what do you mean by the calendaring so this is the process of the smoothing and uh, compressing the material that will be the notably paper during the production by passing a single continuous sheet through a number of pairs of heated rolls these rolls combinations are called it as calendar so friends as we know that after the process of bleaching dyeing and printing we are getting cloths so friends after the process of bleaching dyeing and printing we are getting the cloths in the different types of colors different types of patterns and shades so for the sake of the smoothing of this particular cloth we have to do the process of the calendaring so in the calendaring we are using the different types of calendars and calendars are called it as a different types of rolls by which we can get a smooth and compressing material paper so obviously this is called it as a process calendaring after that the calendaring process there should be a next process which we call it as stamping so stamping what do you mean by the stamping so stamping is a very simple highly effective way to making prints and patterns on a fabric so stamping is process by which we can stamp the different types of patterns and prints so this will be the very very effective method by which uh, we can uh, get and from the stamping method the method will uh, obviously it helps to apply the paint in unique design accurately so this is the stamping which should be one of the important process in the finishing process of your textile industry so after that friends uh, there should be a last process by which we can get a finished product from the textile industry and that uh, the process which will be called it as a packaging so friends this will be the last process which will be very very important in concern with the textile industry by which we can get a finished product so packaging textile basically includes all textile packaging material for the industrial agricultural and the other goods so by which we can get a finished product from the textile industry so friends these are the different types of process that will be are using for the textile industry now we can understand what are the different types of motors which will be required for the textile industry because as we seen that in concern with the trials we are the motors which will be required for the motion control because as we have seen in the textile industry the different types of the operations are there and for the the operations that the operations will be called it as gilling spinning weaving finishing for the sake of that will be will require the different types of motor so as we seen that in the concept of the drive while we are understanding the concept of electrical drive if the electrical motors are employed for motion control then it is called it as electrical drive so the important part will be to understand which type of motor will be required so friends as we seen that the different type of processes that will be carried out so the first type of motor which will be required in the textile industry which will be called it as loom motor so for sake of the loom motor we can understand what is the requirement for the looms in detail so for the sake of the loom motors we are using the three phase uh, squirrel cage induction motor that will be the first motor which will be required for the textile industry 
after that we will require a card motor so this card motors will be preferring totally enclosed three phase quirrell cage induction motor then after that we are using a spinning motor so in that particular spinning motor what is the requirement so that the spinning motor will be totally enclosed fan cooled three phase quirrell cage induction motor so this is the another motor which will be required in the textile industry and after that nowadays instead of this particular three motors we are preferring some of the industries in the textile that will be the modern textile industry which will be basically operated on the automation field so for the sake of that we are preferring the bldc motor that is brushless dc motor which will be called it as a permanent magnet ac motor so this motor will be nowadays very very popular in the textile industry and after that we can understanding for the fiber rolling motors that will be for the purpose of the fiber rolling motors we are preferred the synchronous motor because as we seen that there is a requirement of the constant speed and for the sake of that we are preferring the synchronous motor that will be in textile industry so friends let's we can detailly discuss the different types of motors what is the requirement and what is the rating of that particular motor which should be preferred for the different type of processes so friends let's we can start the first type of motor which will be called it as loom motor so friends what do you mean by the loom motor so as we know that there are the processes which will be called it as the weaving processes so for the sake of that particular weaving processes so as we seen that this is the process of uh, weaving which will be done after the spinning process so for the sake of that we are using the different types of drives and these different types of drives are uh, basically used here and here so for the sake of that particular different types of drive we are using the loom motors so what is the requirement of that particular loom motor so the loom motors basically give in order to accomplish the pickup processes in a very short time and the starting torque of that the loom motor should be high being essentially and a reciprocating mechanism causes both torque and current pulsation so friends for the requirements of that particular loom motors as we seen that it will be requirement so this type of drives or this type of motor should uh, having a high starting torque and obviously so it will be used for the reciprocating mechanism for the sake of the reciprocating mechanism by which uh, we will require both uh, current and torque pulsation so that will be the first requirement and the second requirement for that particular drive will be uh, obviously we will require frequent start and stop because as we have seen this is the process by which we will requiring some of the cotton material will be basically in the inserting in that particular part so in that particular part we have to just stop start and stop so we will require the another requirement that is frequent start and stop so due to that the frequent starting and stopping the temperature rise is uh, carried out in that particular machines because as we seen that while we are doing the commutation that is call it as uh, switching on and off the temperature of that particular motor will be rises so while we are selecting a motor for that particular loom drives we have to take the consideration that the motors will be having a temperature rise or that the motor should be having a good thermal dissipation capacity so for the sake of that uh, we are selecting such type of motor so these are the different requirements so what are the different requirements so very very simple so this is the motor will be having moderate starting torque then uh, second this motor should be frequently start and stop and uh, due to that the starting stopping the temperature so this the motor should be having a good thermal dissipation capacity so this is the requirement of the loom motors so friends as we seen that there are the different types of motors that will be preferred in the electrical engineering so there are the dc type of motor the ac type of motor but out of the requirement of the loom motor the only one motor which will be accomplish the requirement of the loom type of uh, system so obviously this motor will be called it as the three phase quirrell cage induction motor so this three phase quirrell cage induction motors are basically totally enclosed or uh, enclosed fan cooled machines because as we seen that why we are using the totally enclosed fan cooled machines because you know, according to our requirement due to the frequent starting and stopping the temperature rise uh, should be there so obviously we have to do the some of the cooling mechanism so that's why we are preferring three phase quirrell cage induction motor but that the quirrell cage induction motor are uh, totally enclosed fan cooled okay so this is the requirement of the bloom motor so obviously we are preferring three phase quirrell cage induction motor 
so why we are using the three phase spiral cage induction motor uh, because the insulation of the motor must be able to withstand the high moisture content so the different types of ratings of the three phase spiral cage induction motor that will be prefer for the looms or the loom motors so that will be used for the lighten the fabric so first let's we can understand according to the type of the cotton material or the according to the type of the fabrics material which we are using the different types of the ratings of the three phase spiral cage induction motor so the first fabric will be called it as the cotton so for the cotton we are using the 0.37 kilowatt three phase spiral cage induction motor for the silk we are using 0.55 kilowatt uh, three phase spiral cage induction motor for the rayon we are using 0.75 kilowatt uh, three phase spiral cage induction motor for nylon we are using 1.1 and 1.5 kilowatt three phase spiral cage induction motor because as we seen that the uh, strength of the cotton which will be less so that's where we are using the less rating of your three phase spiral cage induction motor so the nylon material which will be having a higher strength and for the sake of that particular looms we are using the larger rating looms uh, three phase spiral cage induction motor so friends after that if the uh, nylon material there should be the another fabrics having a very high strength that will be called it as a uh, heavy fabrics so this is called it as wool and uh, canvas for the and for the sake of that particular wool and canvas we will use three phase spiral cage induction motor of 2.2 kilowatt and uh, 3.7 kilowatt so the range of uh, the motors which will be used for the making of the wool line canvas that will be called it as 2.2 to 3.7 kilowatt and obviously for the sake of that particular requirement we are using obviously 6 or 8 pole three phase spiral cage induction motor so friends in this way we have discussed the uh, two motors which will be preferred a three phase spiral cage induction motor which will be having the number of pole that is 6 or 8 poles okay so now we can understand what is the process what is the type of drive that will be required for the, your uh, three phase spiral cage induction motor so friends first of all we can understand the basic blocks of your drive so as we seen that uh, this is uh, basically source this is the power modulator this is the power modulator this is the type of motor so obviously in concern with the low motor we are using the three phase spiral cage induction motor so it is a three phase spiral cage induction motor and from that particular three phase spiral cage induction motor we are using the different types of looms this is the low and from the three phase spiral cage induction motor to looms we are using a sensor that will be called it as sensing device so that the sensing device will be called it as the speed sensor so obviously the direction of this three phase spiral cage induction motor so it will be possesses the motor torque and uh, this looms which will be basically rotating in the opposite direction so it will be having a load torque tl where tm is called it as motor torque tl is called it as load torque so from that we are getting some of the control unit so this is called it as control unit so friends in that particular control unit we are giving a signal to your different types of power modulator so it is three phase spiral cage induction motor so this obviously the source should be alternating current supply so this is alternating current supply by which we can get the different signal to your three phase spiral cage induction motor so for the starting of that particular looms what will be the industrial drives that we are prefer we are prefer as we know that this is a three phase spiral cage induction motor and we want to do the speed control strategy of this particular motor and as we have the different types of the speed control method of the spiral cage induction motor so the various speed control methods will be call it as uh, by the changing of pole by the changing of frequency by the changing of the stator voltage so these are the some of the speed control methods which should be prefer for the spiral cage induction motor and friends as we have seen that from that particular method we are preferring a variable frequency uh, that is vfd or we call it as the variable frequency speed control technique so for the sake of the variable frequency speed control technique of uh, 
preface squirrel cage induction motor we are preferred a different types of drives and that type of drive will be called it as vfds so friends as we seen that these vfds are uh, basically used here in that particular uh, unit which will be called it as the control unit and power unit so we are using this is the vfd device so this is a variable frequency drive and for the sake of that particular vfd in the industry nowadays we are using the different types of plcs so this is a programmable logical controller which will be give the control signal to the different types of modulator so suppose friends we are having the source voltage of ac and this is the three phase uh, spiral cage induction motor is ac so friends now we are require a different power modulator which will be convert that the alternating current supply into a alternating current supply so we are having one type of power modulator which will be convert that is the alternating current supply into alternating current supply and this device will be called it as cyclo converter so for the sake of the cyclo converter we are using the different uh, types of power electronic devices such power electronic devices may be your thyristor and by the changing of the firing angle of this particular thyristor we can control the speed of your three phase spiral cage induction motor for friends we are taking one of the example suppose the room now we are uh, rotating at a 500 rpm okay but friends now we have just uh, changed the material into that particular room that is from the cotton to nylon so we have to change the speed of your motor will be 700 rpm so this speed sensor will be senses the value of the speed so this speed sensor will give you a value of the sensing to that particular uh, sensing unit so this is the speed sensor so this uh, speed sensor will give you the value of the speed now the value of the speed is 500 rpm but we want to give the input command to that particular uh, control unit uh, so that the motor will be rotated at the uh, 700 rpm so we have to give the input command to the control unit so this speed sensor will give the reference speed of the 500 so this control unit will compare because we have the summing point here so this control unit will compare the input speed is 500 the requirement speed is 700 so according to that this control unit will generate the another 200 rpm strategy so this another 200 rpm speed increasing by the use of the variable frequency control so this variable frequency control drive will be using a cyclo converter so obviously uh, this control unit will generate a different signal which will be required to rotate the speed of that particular motor will be 200 rpm and according to that this control unit will generate a control signal so that the control signal may be your firing angle alpha so this firing angle alpha will be given to your cyclo converters gate terminal and by the using of this cyclo converter gate terminal the firing angle of the cyclo converter will be changing and according to that this cyclo converter will generate the signal that will be required so that the signal in terms of your current so the value of this spiral cage induction motors so that the value of the current will be increasing suppose the value of the current of the squirrel cage induction motor that will be previously 7 ampere but uh, while we are uh, increasing the value of the speed so now that this power modulator will be increasing the value of the current of that particular device so that the value of the current should be now it will be 7.5 ampere so now we are getting the signal to the three phase squirrel cage induction motor uh, to increase the speed that is 7.5 ampere and depending upon this 7.5 ampere current increasing the speed of that particular squirrel cage induction motor now will be increased to your 700 rpm so friends by which uh, we can use a variable frequency drive as a you know, drive which will be preferred for the loom motors and by which we can get a speed control of your style industries of your loom motor so this is the actual answer okay now friends we can understand the second type of motor that will be preferred for the textile industry and this is the second type of motor which will be called it as card motor so for the use of the card motor so why we are using this card motor for that particular the process of the textile product we are preferring this type of the card motor so what is the requirement of this particular card motor will be call it as the for that particular card motor the former are required to heavy a very high starting part because as we know that friends uh, in that particular requirement is the uh, first requirement for the card motor is uh, it is a high starting part second must be able to withstand a prolonged starting period 
so this is the second requirement of your card motor so friends this both requirements for the card motors due to the very high inertia of the card drum because as we seen that the inertia of this drum will be very very larger so once the drum is started the operation is continuous and once the drum is started and unending unlike that of loom where the frequent start and stops are involved so what is the difference in between loom motors and card motors is that in the loom motors we will require a frequent starting and stopping but in concern with the card motor we have to just continuously rotation of that particular drum so that various requirement that we have to take into the consideration while we are designing a card motor so friends let's we can understand which type of motor we should be preferred or uh, accomplish these uh, two requirements so the most commonly drive used for the card motor is again totally enclosed totally closed fan cooled three phase crank cage induction motor because as we seen that while we are comparing the different types of motors the dc motor the ac motor the only motor which will be give you moderate starting torque which will be give you a constant speed along with the different types of efficiency there should be a no maintenance there should be a long life so we are preferring a three phase squirrel cage induction motor that will be totally enclosed or totally enclosed fan cooled squirrel cage induction motor and the rating of this motor so the rating of this motor which will be light fabrics are because as we know that depending upon the fabrics the rating of this motor will be changing so as we know that if there should be a light fabrics then the rating of this motor will be ranging from 1.1 kilowatt to 1.5 kilowatt and if we are using the different types of fabrics which will be having the strength that will be called it as uh, heavy fabrics so for the sake of that we are preferring it is 2.2 3 3.7 and 5.5 kilowatt three phase squirrel cage induction motor so friends what is the difference in between the loom motors and card motor is that in loom motors we will require frequent start and stop but in card motor we will require a continuous operation so for the sake of that we are preferred synchronous speed motor so this is the 750 rpm and 1000 rpm of your card motor so friends let's we can understand uh, which type of drive because the motor will remaining the same and according to our requirement again we have the next type of motors which will be called it as the spinning motor so friends for the spinning motor we will require uh, the different things in that particular operation so friends as shown in figure this is called it as a spinning operation and for the sake of the spinning operation sometime we are using uh, motors which will be connected in a uh, upward direction and sometime we are connecting the motors in the downward direction in concern with the spinning operation okay so friends uh, for the requirement for the good quality of spinning so that the type of motor should be having a starting torque of the spinning motor should be a moderate then the second requirement that will be carried out while we are selecting a motor for the spinning operation so the value of the acceleration should be smooth so what will happen if the starting torque is not moderate if the starting torque will be low then the tension on the arm would be insufficient hence the arm would get entangled and break then the starting torque will be very very high then the acceleration will be very very high so that's why we are preferring the starting torque of this motor will be large okay so now we can understand which type of motor will be preferred for that particular the process of the spinning so as we know that there are the three types of drives are preferred for the spinning frame operation so for the sake of that three types of the drives so the first type of drive will be called it as a single speed motor so what do we mean by the single speed motor so in that particular uh, single speed motor we are using four pole or six pole squirrel cage induction motor okay Uh, then the second uh, type of drive that will be preferred for this operation so this uh, second type of drive will be called it as two speed motor what do we mean by the two speed motor so two speed motors which will be having the number of poles that is 4 by 6 or 6 by 8 poles are used for this operation so this is called it as a two speed motors then the next requirement type of drive will be called it as two motor so what do we mean by the two motor so two separate motors are required for this operation so what is the rating of that particular 
separate motor so the rating in terms of speed so the first uh, rating of that particular drive should be operated like uh, 1500 by 1000 or the second that is 1000 by 750 rpm so this is the requirement for the two motor drive and for the sake of that again we are preferring three phase scale cage induction motor because we are getting these uh, different requirements only by a three phase Squirrel cage induction motor, but whatever may be the types of the motor used, the motor must be started with a control torque because the torque control is very very important aspect in concern with that particular the type of the motor. So, friends, while we are selecting the type of drive, we have to take into the consideration part of the torque control strategy. So, friends, as we seen that there are the different types of the closed loop control strategy of the different types of motors so we have to take the part of the consideration that is a torque control strategy so while we are selecting your drive we have to take the consideration part of the torque control strategy so friends let's we can understand uh, what doing by the torque control so we have the fundamental concept this is a torque controller so this is a torque controller and from the torque controller we are uh, giving the different types of uh, that will be the drive which will be preferred so obviously this is the three phase squirrel cage induction motor now we are preferring the variable frequency drive by which we can connect three phase squirrel cage induction motor for your operation for your operation so it is a three phase squirrel cage induction motor by which we can get the output so the output which will be required for a spinning motors Okay, so now we have to sense the torque. So now we are connecting one torque sensor. So friends, as you know that while we are doing the torque sensor, obviously we have to control the torque. So we have the control unit here. So we have the torque sensor. So we are giving the input to your torque controller. So this is the summing point. This is the torque controller. So it is a control strategy. So what do you mean by the control strategy? So in the control strategy, we are using the different types of controllers. Such controllers will be your Arduinos. Such controllers will be your PLCs by which we can get which type of the torque sensing capability. So friends, this is a torque sensor and that the torque sensor value is a value we call it as T and uh, we are giving the reference value of torque your, your T star. So according to uh, your reference torque value of the T star, this uh, drive will be control the torque of your uh, spinning motor because as we seen that we have to control the torque of this particular drive. So friends, as we seen that while we are doing the torque control, so obviously the parameters of torque and speeds are correlated. So while we are doing the torque control loop, we have to take into the consideration of your speed control loop. So we have to take the speed control strategy in that particular torque controller. So by which we can uh, get a error value of torque and this error value of torque will, will be given to your torque controller by which we can control the value of torque of your system. Now these signals are given to your variable frequency drive. So this variable frequency drive must be used as an inverter because uh, depending upon our supply, we are using the different types of uh, converters. So now we are using, suppose the supply is DC, so we are using the inverter because this inverter will convert that the DC current supply into AC current supply. And now this AC current supply will be given to your three phase current cage induction motor. So friends, by which we can use a different types of controller that will be called it as variable frequency drive because uh, now we are using the three phase squirrel cage induction motor but friends as per our requirement the torque control loop is essential while you are selecting a drive for your spinning of your motor okay so that will be the very very important parameter so friends now we can understand which type of uh, drive that will be preferred for uh, the operation. So friends, nowadays, there is one type of motor which will be called it as brushless DC motor because this motor will be having a different types of the advantage while we are using this motor for a particular application. So these BLDC motors nowadays preferred for uh, the operation in the automation industries of your 
textile. So this BLDC motors, why we are using this BLDC motor? Uh, because the BLDC motor will possesses the good cooling capacity to keep their temperature within the limits in the presence of the large power losses. So that's why the brushless motors are uh, nowadays preferred in the different types of industry because this brushless motor will possesses a good starting torque, frequent starting stopping, automation control, the control strategy is very, very simple. These motors will be having the value of the high torque at low speed, the positioning and the actuation system is very, very larger and the longevity and easy of maintenance. So that's why instead of a three-phase curial cage induction motor, nowadays most of the industry will preferring the BLDC motor. The only one disadvantage of this BLDC motor because the control strategy which will be required for that particular BLDC motor is very, very costly. But if you want to do the automation in the textile industry, then obviously for the better positioning and the actuation system of your different types of looms, different types of spinning motors, we are preferred the BLDC motor for your system. And for the controlling of the, this BLDC motor, now we are prefer a different types of drive that will be called it as the brushless DC drive. So friends, as we seen that what is the requirement of the brushless DC drive. So for the sake of the brushless DC drive, we are using the different types of power modulators. So friends, now we have to draw the block diagram of that particular or now we can draw the basically the circuit diagram of the BLDC motor. So friends, uh, now I can draw one type of the thyristor which will be preferred for that particular leg. So it is uh, basically a DC signal because now we are using the three phase uh, VSI that is voltage source inverter for that particular circuit. So this is the three phase circuits. So this is uh, T1, this is T2, this is T3, this is T4, this is T5, T1, T2, T3, that is T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. So this is the DC supply that we are giving. Okay, so friends, now we are connecting a three phase uh, squirrel cage induction motor which will be having a winding. So this is three phase, this is a three phase squirrel cage induction motor which will be having a winding. Because we have the armature winding of this particular supply. So now we are connecting the first winding to your first. Now this is phase A, this is phase B, this is phase C. So this is second and now we have to connect this is third. This is the neutral point. Okay, the current flowing through that particular. So this is IA, this is IB, this is IC. This is IA, this is IB, and this is IC. So this is a three phase voltage source inverter. This is PLDC motor. Okay, so in BLDC motor, we are using the different types of hall sensor. So this BLDC motor, which will be sensing of its heat speed by means of the hall effect sensor. So this is the hall sensors. Okay, so from this hall sensor, we are just giving the signal. So this signal will be given to your control block. So now this control block will generate a different signal to the different types of thyristor. So this is for the upper leg, this is for the lower leg. So this control block will generate the control signal to the firing angle of this particular thyristor. And by the changing of the particular firing angle of this thyristor, we can change the current of that particular BLDC motor and while we are changing the value of the current of this motor then the obviously the torque of this motor or the speed of this motor will be controlled. So this is called it as the different type of drive which will be preferred for your BLDC motor. Okay? So now friends we can understand the next type of motor which will be preferred for your textile industry. So this is motor which will be called it as a synchronous motor. 
so as we know that the synchronous motors are basically constant speed motors so as we seen that in the different types of the processes in the textile industry in the finishing processes we have to get a constant speed and for the sake of that particular constant speed we are preferring the different types of motor that will be called it as a synchronous motor so why we are using this is a synchronous motor in the textile industry so the first reason behind that to maintain a constant tension on the fiber within the roll because as we seen that there is a process in the finishing process in which we have to keep or we have to maintain the constant tension on the fiber so for the sake of that we are preferring the synchronous motor and obviously to attain a wide range of speed with variable frequency drive system so for the sake of that uh, now we are preferring the synchronous motor uh, to get a wide range of speed because friends as we know that the synchronous motors are uh, basically constant speed motor but while we are uh, using a variable frequency drive for that particular synchronous motor so that the synchronous motor will be give you a different uh, speed range so for the sake of that we are using the synchronous motor in the textile industries different finishing processes now we will discuss what are the different types of power modulators or what are the different types of drives that we are preferring for your synchronous motor so friends again we have to discuss which type of drive which should be preferred for the synchronous motor so obviously synchronous motor uh, so we have to again draw a basic block diagram of drive so it is a source it is a power modulator so it is a power modulator again now this motor will be changed so now the motor will be a synchronous motor so now the motor is the synchronous motor and now we are connecting uh, the load to that particular synchronous motor that is the finishing processes load okay so for the sake of that we have to sense the speed of that particular motor so now we are connecting one speed sensor here so this is a speed sensor so now we are connecting one control unit so this is the control unit so friends the speed control and, and we are giving the input command so for the source of the synchronous motor we are using ac source for the power modulator that will be convert ac into ac so most of the time the power modulator that will be preferred a speed control strategy so this is again preferring for the variable uh, frequency drive for your synchronous motor speed control strategy so friends from that particular we will change the input signal to your synchronous motor so we are preferring for the vfd power modulator depending upon your requirement now we are preferring suppose source is dc we can consider the source is dc the motor is ac so now we are using the inverter circuit for your vfd drive so we have to draw another single diagram this is called it as vfd from VFD, we are connecting supply to your P phase synchronous motor. Okay, so this is VFD, and uh, we are giving the reference signal that is uh, voltage source, and second that is frequency source. So, by the changing of the frequency to keeping a voltage, we can get the speed control of that particular drive, will be the below the synchronous speed and above the synchronous speed. So, depending upon the speed control requirement. For the VFD, that is a speed control which should be required for the below synchronous speed and above synchronous speed. We have to maintain this V by F ratio constant, so we will get the constant flux value. So, friends, this type of drive it should be called it as variable frequency drive, and we know what do you mean by variable frequency drive. So, in variable frequency drive, we are using the different inverter circuit. So, from which we can change the firing angle of this particular inverter circuit, we can change the value of current of that particular synchronous motor and according to the value of the current in the synchronous motor, we can uh, change the speed of that particular synchronous motor. So friends, this is the type of drive which should be preferred for your synchronous motor drive. So friends, in this VA, we have detailed study about the different types of electrical drives that we are prefer for the textile industry so thank you